And then, ah, no. That's too bright. And we look cute. It's so bright. How can you see? We're on our balcony. <laughs> Hello. Yes, we are. Um, apparently, I don't know. I can't see. It's too bright. Uh, I have really small eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't but... see anything. Wait, look. If I stand here, everything's fine. Claudia, stand up. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, if you can probably already see in the reflection of our window there, but I'll turn the camera around so you can see as well. Yeah, view from the balcony. We uh, probably should wake up our child. I don't know what is going on with the smear of light across the screen now. Yeah, Rupert doesn't ever sleep in our bed except for when we're on holiday. Um, normally he's like, get away from me. Don't you dare touch me while I'm asleep. But on holiday he's like, snuggles. I'm going to lie on top of you. And we're like, okay. Yeah, fine. Last night, last night, I was like, I miss you. Because I've basically been renegated down to Rupert's bed. She, he still calls Rupert's bed. I'm like, where are you sleeping? You're like, mommy and mama's bed. I'm like, okay. Anyway, so last night, Rupert slept on like mama's chest on this side and I on the other side. And then Jessica woke up five minutes in and was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> and I genuinely couldn't breathe. They were just crushing me. <laughs> It was quite nice. It was a nice kind of crush, I suppose. <laughs> the best kind of way to, to oh, yeah, have I'm your sorry. arms. <laughs> this is excellent. This is some excellent high quality vlogging happening right here with my super croaky voice doing well. <laughs> So clearly we're back home. Yes, I mean, as you can, Jessica's trying to pretend <laughs> otherwise with her pink Chinese dress that I bought her. This is so beautiful, look at this dress. Wait, it's a Chong, it's, very it's like a Chong Sam design, but like with, but Jessica wanted like a bigger a large, skirt, a bigger not skirt. like an A-line skirt. And, I, and we were looking for them and we couldn't find one. And I was out with my auntie and Jessica hadn't come out that day and we walked past this like, little boutique shop. I was like, oh, that's exactly what Jessica's been looking for. I'm very excited. And I bought her two wearing. tops. Because it was like, buy three pieces, get 30% off. <laughs> I'm very pleased. I was wearing one of the tops, but then we sat down to film and realised that everything was the same. Yeah. And it it's really a really work. quite nice top. It's like a cream top with like an embroidered flowers in a Chinese yes. style as well, but it was like all quite cream. So. It was like the, the quickest background. shop. Like my dad came in with me, he sat on the chair <laughs> and then we left the shop and then he was like, oh, so you didn't buy anything from that shop then? I was like, no, I did. I bought two tops and a dress for Jessica. And he's like, what? That was so fast. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to try anything So I didn't need to try them on. I was just like... You're like, she'll like that, that and that. Let's go. Yeah, I was just like to the shop assistant, I just need a size small in that dress. Back to the point of the video oh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're back home in England. I think that has a little bit of a point. I d yeah, that did. Same sex, you know, like maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm intrigued as to where you're going to take this. It's quite useful being the same sex. It is. For shopping for clothes. Yeah. Because potentially you can. You know what? I'm sure there are some. <laughs> I was going to say because you can try them on. Gender couples who are also efficient shoppers. I know, I thought, was that, I thought I started this train of thought and then thought, eh. Anyway, I'm wearing a ginormous uh, polo neck and brown corduroy trousers yeah. and long men's socks because actually it's quite cold <laughs> here now that we're back in the UK and I'm drinking my cup of tea that's got a robin on it. <laughs> Because it's temporary. Yeah, I've got terrible jet lag. It's really <laughs> bad. It's quite, it's quite awful. Um, I just feel like I've been hit in the head with some plywood. With some plywood? <laughs> Not even anything really particularly strong and heavy. Just a bit of plywood. <laughs> I don't really know the strength of wood. <laughs> okay, I've, <laughs> I've been hit in the head with an oak branch. Yeah. Okay. Better? Better. <laughs> okay, I've been hit in the head with an oak branch. Plywood <laughs> <laughs> is such a funny one to go with. Oh. It's a lot. That's not what today's video is about. It's not about shopping and it's not about my incredible jet lag, or although I'm sure that will play into it. Or the density of woods. Or the density of woods. <laughs> or how much you look like a fisherman. Fisher lady. Fisher lady. Fisher, Fisher person. person. A Fisher. As Rupert would like to correct us. Because he adds person to the end of everything. Oh, Rupert's so sweet. He starts. He, he's now. He now says, 
uh, where's that child's adult? Rather than yes. like, where's that child's mummy or daddy or whatever. So, or like, even parent. Yeah, he even because... calls us his adult sometimes. Like, we went out the other night and he's like, my adults can't have those. And I was like, <laughs> like you adults? I was like, oh, you mean mummy and mama? And he's like, yes, my adults. So I was like, okay. <laughs> it's because I trained him to say, oh. So this video is actually the third in our series of videos from Malaysia. There's from Malaysia. One more. <laughs> um, even though this one is actually not filmed in Malaysia, but the fourth one is. Uh, yeah. But it has a sponsorship in, that's why it's the fourth one. That's just how it worked out. My plan was that my cousin or my aunt or one of my Malaysian relatives would give us like an authentic cooking experience, but none of them wanted to because they were all a bit too camera shy. <laughs> so, but none of them were able to just say no lightly. So they were kind they of just do do dodging that. around the subject. Okay. And, I, and then Jessica was just like. Just say it fell through. It fell through. Thank you. So instead, we thought we would talk about what it is like being queer parents whilst you are traveling in a non-LGBTQ plus friendly country. Because that's obviously a question that gets asked a lot. Personally, yeah. I think it doesn't even need to be traveling to a non-friendly LGBTQ plus country. It can just be like travel per se, because whenever you go outside of your home environment, not like just your home, like your town or village or city or wherever yeah. you're comfortable with, like all the places you regularly hang out and you feel safe. Like when you go out of those places, then I feel like you always have to kind of come out. Yeah. Because I you know, have to come out every day, but Yeah, but like we, you feel you're confronted yeah. with that more. So even just driving in England to a different county. Even if we're going to different countries within the EU, we're still a bit like Oh, is that, is that annoying? Maybe we'll just have a little quick Google beforehand yeah. and also to see if like, anything's come up. And also it's like, you kind of think, oh, okay, well, Italy is ca is like prim primarily Catholic, so they, they're probably not so great on it. But actually, we've always found Italy are really quite welcoming. Yeah. So it's not always based well, on like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point, it's, like, it's not always religion-based, is it? News. There's like different, so some countries have like pros and cons, there are pros and cons everywhere you go. Does that and country have to celebrate gay, gay pride? It, mm, countries that celebrate Do they criminalise? What's it actually like on the streets? Do they criminalise That's a whole nother thing. Gay. Pink washing. <laughs> ah. You need to know your foreign affairs, guys, if you travel <laughs> based on what we're saying. Yeah, but I think that's a thing that also applies when we're travelling in Malaysia and speaking about Malaysia, because there is the level of what is this what is the policy of the country as a whole? What is the kind of stated official policy and what is the cultural kind of acceptance experience of people who live there? Like there are gay people living in Malaysia, which is also something that people in comments seem to forget. Yeah, there's a no lot. there's like, like just like any country, there's gonna be gay citizens. And I think in Malaysia that actually they don't live like as openly as we do, like I don't think they probably have a YouTube channel or you know, or an Instagram account. But there are plenty of people who are in same sex relationships. Like we spotted them. We had like I had like my one gay of radar on favourite thing to do. <laughs> Look, I think often in especially online discourse there can be this thing where it, a whole country gets um, kind of shoved in with the official policy with completely forgetting that every country is made up of individual people and everyone has different thoughts mm. on the matters mm -hmm. at hand. And also there are different cultures within each country. Well, and also different states. So there are known states within Malaysia that are more Islamic and um, majority of the population are Malay and maybe the rules about um, public affection for anybody is much um, higher and stricter. Whereas with other states, like, you know, obviously the capital city, Kuala Lumpur, and some more of the tourist popular destinations, and also um, like Penang and Langkawi, which we visited, which also happen to be like more Chinese populated, um, they are w way more relaxed. Yeah, we're in a very interesting position like when we're traveling in Malaysia because we are both foreign, we're both foreign tourists, like you have a very British accent, we both have very British accents, I'm incredibly pale, but we also have family ties. So 
if we're going to a local place and it's and we're having dinner there and you know if we're going to eat at hawker stalls we're generally with some of your family members mm. and whilst your auntie is chatting to someone she might introduce us as her niece and her wife she's like oh this is my niece and her wife and we'll go on that we'll be like okay she's introduced us as a niece and wife cool or she might say these are my nieces in which case we're like oh subtle difference okay we we We'll go with that. And so it's really helpful to have that sort of a little family there to help us judge and navigate that way. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we can also move through spaces as tourists that is treated a bit differently. And if we go to a hotel and they say, oh, you want twin beds, we'll go double bed. And they just kind of, sure, yeah. yeah. And if someone outright asks us, I always remember that guy at the um, the hotel in Thailand though, who's like, "So are you? Are you sisters?" And like, married. And they, and every time people just kind of go, <laughs> "I don't remember that. Was that in Thailand last year?" Yeah, oh. and then just kind of roll with it. Well, this year though, it happened in England because as we were about we were in Heathrow about to board the plane, mm -hmm. you go through at the gate, hand over your passports, the guy checks it, he looks at both of our passports, Rupert's passport, checks the three of us, and then he goes, hmm, oh, sisters, yeah, sisters. You're like, no, no, goes, yes, sisters. Like, no, no. <laughs> we're married. He's like, no, but you look like no, sisters. No, but he didn't. He, there was a pause. He went, ah. Oh. <laughs> then he kind of looked down, like maybe thinking it through, like maybe he was thinking, should this be an awkward situation? Have I made it awkward? I will make it not <laughs> awkward. And, and then he was like, well, you look like sisters. And we were like, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, fair no. enough. No. <laughs> is it fair yeah. enough? Oh yeah, it is fair enough. We have the same surname. He thought we looked similar. His go-to was that we were sisters. I think that's okay. Whose baby is that? Like, <laughs> what? What could be one of our babe, one of our babies, and one is the aunt? What's the big deal? We have totally got off the thing that I, was, I wrote to help us stay on track. Oh, God. So one of the things that people have asked is, what do we do when Rupert says mummy and mama? Last year when we were in Malaysia, he didn't have that many words that he could sort of string together. He had a lot of words, but they came individually, or he would say. Like, two words together or three words together. So he would happily call us mama and mummy, but he wouldn't necessarily be able to point at us and go like, this is my mummy and this is my mama. Uh, this year, however, boy, can he talk? Oh, he can talk. So whereas last time, if someone asked us, oh, who's, whose baby is it? We'd just say whoever was holding at him or near him or had just been interacting, go, oh, this is mine, my, yeah, my baby, it's true. This time, um, we just kind of went with the flow of whatever he was saying at the time. Maybe last time, because it was our first time traveling mm. with him, and maybe I did feel a little bit more awareness around us being a same-sex couple with our baby, and whether or not people would register that, and if they did register it, was it going to be a positive or a negative experience? But this year I was like really like blasé, like I just didn't actually care. And like, maybe like, but I think a part of that is because one, we've had him for an extra year now. So like, I'm more used to our little like family units. Yeah. And like, I've become more confident in like, well, I have a right to be here as, yeah. a, as a tourist, like with my family, with my sexuality. Like, you know, you, that's not, you're not, not allowed. Obviously there are some countries you can't, you are not allowed to travel to. Malaysia is very much like a tourist friendly country. And I am half Malaysian, so I'm like, I, I am coming to visit my family. So I just think I just have that sense of more confidence in myself and our family. And then also like the reception was my, I feel like, I felt like we were like more warmly received then, and there were definitely less questions than last year. So whether that's just like a movement, a progression in people's thoughts from seeing more people traveling and more people in same-sex couples um, and just like more global awareness of like sexuality because like when we went to the when we were in our hotel for instance the wait one of the waitresses from the hotel in Langkawi 
immediately came up to us on our first night when we went to the to dinner to yeah. the restaurant and says, "Oh hi, you were here last year. I remember you." And I was just like, and I think it was really nice. And like she yeah. she, she knew that we so were both sweet. the moms. She knew that we were a family. Do you think it's because he looks different? Maybe. Last year there was this whole thing about how he was a he was like a. He was quite like an Asian baby with like, blonde yeah, hair. Yeah, he looked more Chinese. And it really and then, confused people. Maybe. And then this year he looked more like a just mixed race kid. Yeah, they were much more last time like, why does this baby have your face and kind of like her hair? What's going on? I don't know. Who knows? And now he's got darker hair and then... It's I don't less. know, or maybe the, maybe people are less bothered about baby. Maybe more people want to ask questions when it's a baby, but when it's a child, they still they still comment on how beautiful he is, but they don't say. Yeah, I mean, like last year, we definitely had more people coming up saying, "Oh, is the father Malay?" Maybe I don't know. Like it was weird. We just didn't get as many questions this year. Maybe because he's talking so much more That's true. that people more feel they can't say because he'll hear as yeah. well so you don't just like talk about someone in front of them who will talk back to you yeah he will talk back to you or because he's talking so much they don't really get a chance to like ask a question because <laughs> he's just talking yeah. yeah um we did get asked in a comment whether we'd had a conversation with him about homophobia and about whether when it's uh, we should not mention having a mummy and a mama obviously at some point in time we are going to have to have a conversation with him about what homophobia is and when it's not safe to talk about our family unit and the way that it exists. He's currently two and a half and he will happily tell you that some people have one parent, some people have two, some people have three, some people have more, some people have two mums, two dads, one mum, one dad, some a whole variation. Just have some, and yeah, grandparents. some people just have and but adults, um, yeah. uh, different types exactly. of family makeups. Um, but I think if we told him about homophobia as a thing and kind of a reason, like it was a thought, maybe should we? But then no, because he might just be like, yeah, I have a mummy and a mama, but not a daddy, but I probably shouldn't always tell people that because of homophobia. Should I tell you that? <laughs> it's probably something he would say. Um, because he, he can talk to the cows come home. No, I, just I think, think that's like an older child thing because yeah, I think at it's this old, point yeah. in time, people just assume when he says mummy and mama, they're like, mama, that might just be a word he uses for his nanny or it's an affectionate term for his auntie. It's not a, a concern. Whereas last year I did feel it was, but I think because nothing came of it, mm. it made me more okay. Mm. So, uh, when we're obviously been talking about where we're family and we have the safety of being with family, and um, I think even if I think that almost camouflages this a bit as well, because if there's just a big group of people sitting at a table, it, people don't other people wouldn't clock necessarily like who's a couple and who's not a couple around the table. No. So like we feel quite you know we feel safe and and like that is not really a thing. But outside of when we're with family, so if it's just the two of us traveling, like when we go to the beach resorts and things, we do like our research and look ahead and we choose a hotel that is usually like, I mean, maybe I should, I mean, I think we should say that we're a little bit privileged in that we can, we can afford to choose a hotel that's like of a fairly good class. And I think that does make a bit of a difference. Personally to me, I feel, like it's going to be more international um like so we try and choose hotels that are a bit more international um like you can sort of look at that from um trip advisor reviews like who who has kind of what people stay there like whether it's good for families whether it's good for couples sometimes i even look in the trip advisor reviews to see if anyone has mentioned like same sex or gay or anything like that yeah. or like how they were with toddlers and families and things like that um and sometimes the hotel will say that they're like LGBTQ plus friendly, but I find like hotels that are fairly um, repu what's your, re repu reputable, reputable, they have like more highly. And this is obviously a bit of an assumption, but on the whole, I feel like they have more um, worldly staff potentially. Maybe people who are a bit more fluent in English and therefore also maybe a bit more culturally aware of other people's lifestyles the hotel has to like 
deliver a certain type of standard and therefore they aren't really going to be so, even if they have opinions and views, they know it's not their place to potentially say so. Yeah, I think it's unfortunate that we have to lump being LGBTQ plus in with like rich people demanding that their poodle gets to sleep on the bed. Yeah. But <laughs> you kind of, I do at kind a of, certain point, do have to. I do kind of feel like that. I feel like we are like the special, weird, eccentric yeah. tourists because of our chosen lifestyle mm. in the same way that some other very particular people might be. Yeah. yeah. Who people who are like, Don't I want worry. to I want we, to sleep with my totally anaconda. I'm totally aware. I'm like, hello. Okay. Very much not a chosen lifestyle. Um, but... It is slightly like that. You are paying for the privilege of being very secure. And also there's And like... that is not to say that anything might happen or no. would happen. But I don't gives... think we've ever really felt unsafe in outside of that. I feel, environment. personally, I feel like when you're in a hotel and within the boundaries of the hotel, there's often like, you know, there's like, there's certain levels of security that a hotel provide. Um, you know, you can't come in unless you're usually a guest. You can't like use the facilities unless you're a guest. And then most of the guests there are international. And therefore I feel like when there are other people who are from Europe or America or places like that, not to say that they, they themselves might be homophobic, but for me mentally, it just makes me feel safer. Like, cause I feel like, you know, generally those people are gonna be more accepting of us and therefore I feel like there's a bit of safety in numbers. Yeah. And whereas, whereas like, you know, obviously I wouldn't feel so safe staying in an Airbnb house, um, just the two of us and Rupert, you know? Yeah, fair. Because like, if some strange person decided to follow us home or like there was a knock on the door, like I would feel quite anxious about that, I think. Whereas I think, so when I'm trapped, so I feel when we're in Malaysia and anywhere that we go, I do feel safer with that kind of hotel protection. <laughs> do you know what I think that's a valid yeah, thing to no, say? No, I think that is, I think it is, and I think it's fine. I think we are definitely more aware and more careful now that we have Rupert. Mm. I think that it's not a safety that we can... Um, not that we ever like played played with our safety, but it's not something we can afford to take lightly now that we have him, mm. because it's another it's another person, it's a small person who we are we are looking after, and and we need to be much more careful with him, mm. and we can't just be like oh we'll just go and we'll, you know stay in this backpacking hotel and, and take things easy we yeah it's feel kind like, of strange it's like um, no we're going to be really careful in, with you yeah in some ways like traveling as just two women could feel safer because if we needed to or ever felt unsafe we could say we were like just friends on holiday you know and then make our excuses for why we don't want their attention or company right now Oh, uh, we're both married. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Husbands well, are just yeah, over there. Exactly, they're yeah. actually just, they're just coming. Yeah. And then what I was going to say was like, but sometimes now traveling with Rupert, I feel like um, sometimes that's safer because less unwanted attention in terms of, I'm talking about male attention, so like it happens because they're like, oh, like they're with their, one of them's clearly one of theirs child you know like they're not going to yeah. approach two women and also we're a bit older maybe like but I feel like if we didn't have Rupert with us we probably would still be approached and then it'd be then we had to have those kind of awkward conversations yeah that used to be that used to be a whole thing so it's like safe the fake the fake boyfriends the fake husbands yeah so I kind of feel Just like that. safer and more that. protected by the fact that we're giving off like this family maybe not necessarily the family that we are but we're giving off a family um image to people which then like makes us invisible to like people we'd rather be invisible to. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dog groomer. It's the dog groomer. Hello. Oh, hi. Claudia had to go pick up Tilly from the groomer, so it's just me now. I hope you've enjoyed our sometimes awkward and quite raw thoughts on traveling as a two-mum family. 
obviously there is a privilege in being able to travel in itself. For us it's so important for Rupert to be able to experience the world and different cultures and specifically Malaysia. Claudia is half Chinese Malaysian, meaning her mother is ethnically Chinese, but her family has been in Malaysia for generations, and her mother is no longer with us, meaning that a lot of that tradition and the culture so much that she would be able to be passing down and, and sharing with us and bringing to Rupert's everyday life, it also isn't financially possible for most of Claudia's Malaysian family to be able to travel to the UK. And thus, it's really important for us that we're able to take him to Malaysia so he's able to meet his family and experience his own heritage. And it's important for Claudia as well. And for me, I also take great joy in sharing in a part of my wife and, and what makes her who she is and those incredible innate things and cool memories that she has and recreating them in our child. The, the smells that bring her joy because she smelt them when she was a tiny baby. Bringing those to our child as well and recreating happy memories of Chinese New Year and being surrounded by lots of cousins and lots of aunties as everyone hands out umpals and tosses salad and, and eats delicious food. So, thank you so much for watching. Remember that there are two episodes of our Malaysia 2024 series that have gone out so far. You can click to watch them by going, clicking the card that's just up here or the link that's in the description down below. Uh, I think so far we have released the traveling with a toddler, all the tips that you may need to know about traveling with a toddler, which I saw so many people commented were actually helpful tips for traveling as an adult as well. And I can't lie, I also find many of Rupert's, like, many of Rupert's plain things quite soothing for myself. So I, I would agree. And if you'd like to see some of our experience the Chinese New Year, then watch that video as well. The next video coming up has some of my personal tips about when you're traveling in the tropics with a chronic illness, something that I get asked about a lot and obviously have to put a lot of thought into. So highly recommend the video that's coming out next as well. If you'd like to see more from Claudia and I, you can find us on Instagram at Jessie and Claude, which will also be in the description down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.